Good morning, folks. I had the chance to come down to Okuma's Technology Showcase event here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was hosted here, which is Okuma's North America headquarters, where they do a fair amount of work, both with showrooms and we'll see if we can sneak in a little bit behind there uh, to see the, where they do a lot of work on machines. Um, and then also kind of across the street, they have a facility called their Partners in Thing, which is where they do a lot of their work and research development with various different partners in the industry. Uh, and I actually had the chance to give a speech yesterday and today talking a little bit about our story, uh, but also the speech was a theme around uh, so automation in a small shop. So focusing more on processes and things you can do uh, easy or for no cost versus the idea of automation like this. But I still wanted to take a quick chance to show some of the stuff I saw here that was interesting. Uh, but let me know in the comments below. Our speech wasn't recorded, but I could easily turn it or a version of it into a, its own YouTube video. Uh, so again, let us know in the comments below. Uh, the first thing though that jumped out to me here is this. That is an MB5000. It is a horizontal that is one size larger than our MB4000. And to be honest, I probably would have bought an MB5000 had they had them available, but they were many months out at the time and the 4000 was in. Uh, if you're looking into horizontal, this one is bigger overall, but the big difference that I cared about was this has a fair amount more Y travel, which often seems to be the limiting factor on horizontals. Uh, but what is cool about this is that that is one MB5000 and right next to it, is a second MB5000 with this sort of narrow walkway right here. Actually plenty big enough to get in as you need to, but you won't really need to get into here because it is fed with it, this giant FastM system, which is just so cool. And in fact, what's really cool selfishly is that's a Saunders Machine Works fixture plate right there with a bunch of dual station mod devices. So, uh, Sorry for the humble brag, but it's really cool when you're here at Okuma and you see your product on one of the tombstones. Um, but this is an amazing solution. I actually kind of want to learn more about what they cost. I don't think this is ever going to be in our radar, but um, it might not be as bad as you think. Uh, it just might not. If you think about it, it's, it's kind of a fancy form of pallet racking. So it's a probably a, it probably scales really well. I'll put it that way in terms of the cost. But the other one I saw and uh, I just didn't know that much about this either, is this um, power, pallet tower. So one of the guys yesterday was mentioning that this isn't that much different in price than the 10 pallet pull option for the machine that we have. Um, we have the six pallet pull option. I wanted the 10, but it was a Japanese order, many months additional lead time, and apparently, for whatever reason, just isn't very common in the US. So it kind of wasn't an option, but this, um, and I guess it's kind of not, I assume it would be kind of moved right up to that 4,000, but um, this is great because you get a much higher density by starting to use the vertical space, which is a great point because if you look at our machine, uh, I love it, I love it, but there's nothing we're really ever easily gonna be able to do with the space above our pallet pool. Um, and it's always fun to see the machines that uh, we run, and then you now see them here, see how they're set up and what's different, so forth. Uh, I snuck in here a little early this morning to see if I can get some filming done before uh, the crowds come in, but we'll film some more throughout the day. I definitely want to talk to some of the vendors and uh, see, I think this is probably the IMTS machine that they had the demo going on, which is pretty cool. That is a uh, slightly different build, but kind of the big brother to our M uh, Agenda 660, but that's a really nice machine. Let's see what else we can find. You guys have heard me talk about Metal Quest a lot uh, throughout my journey, and Scott Harms, who runs Metal Quest Unlimited, has become a friend and, and really a mentor. He probably wouldn't like me saying that, but he has. They're here today as a new company they spun off called Metal Quest Solutions, where they're digitizing factories and using some Dassault software to show how, I think it's called Dalmia, and Factory Flow to show how you can use VR and layout and even program robots. Um, I still don't really understand it, but it looks really cool, so we'll see if we can get him to do a little bit more explanation um, of it. And then, what else? Oh, this is the Load and Go. I think this is one of the, is that a Gossiger solution here? But one of the sort of many different robot um, options. And again, these are not as, uh, these are not as expensive as you might think, is my recollection. And they kind of give you a turnkey robotic solution. Oh, that's a not something you see every day. Uh, that there's the uh, Okuma grinder. That's kind of fun to see. 
Oh, this is cool. All right, we'll put a timestamp in in case you want to fast forward here. Um, but I'm going to go over these plaques for the folks that aren't able to make it down here to sort of see what Okuma's talking about here. Just pause the video if you want to read longer than I'm pausing on them. I do love this fact. We never home, our, there is no home on our machine. I hope the scale uh, of this room comes through as you're walking down it, but it's just crazy. Like that's an M460. It's not a small machine and it just kind of disappears into a room like this. Kind of cool, 1632 Oklahoma. Actually, I would love to own that machine one day. Actually, I shouldn't say that. We had one of these, a much older version, uh, but that's a nice service grinder. Yeah, they're doing work. Look at that. So if you're wondering what they do here, uh, number one, I don't completely know in terms of I don't want to give the full comprehensive answer, but I believe uh, when Okuma builds its machines in Japan, they will bring them to the states, or the state U.S. machines at least, and then they'll put them in inventory, but then they will bring them here to do the final customer tweaks if you're modifying this, you know, slight modifications to the machine build. I believe they can also bring them here for repair. And then I don't know if Okuma does this, but I know a lot of the high-end builders um, for certain instances or applications will actually bring a, a machine onto their floor and do a customer prove out or a customer runoff uh, and, and go through that whole process and here, and then they'll ship the machine to the customer floor and the, they'll do a similar kind of runoff or prove out process before the customer signs off on it, which is pretty cool. Look at these machines, that's cool. Twin turret, oh man. Look at that little guy, that LB. Man, these things just look tiny in this in this room. All the little Genos lathe. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's interesting. So you, the turret, the tools are built right into the turret. You don't have to add the blocks on. It's kind of one of the things I love seeing when we have the chance to go see other shops or OEMs here. Uh, it's just like, how do other people do stuff? M560V. Another 560. Just chip conveyors. I'm guessing that's a paint booth. What caught my eye a second ago was this door is automatically opening down here. GA, what is that? Oh, grinder, interesting. That's a big grinder, huh? Huh. Little Maltus. So they make a, I think one size smaller, don't quote me on that, but a B200 and we we, <laughs> we weren't sure if we were gonna get the Wilman. We were, we were looking at other um, options to have a five axis style mill turn machine. 
turning a million, et cetera. And we looked at the Sugami, um, which was probably the next best option for a new machine. And then we did look at the Maltus. It's just the wrong machine. It's still a big machine. It still has relatively slow uh, tool change times, but um, they are, the price was not actually, it was more, it was actually very similar to the Sugami, in other words, which is crazy because it's, to me, such a bigger machine. Yeah? Oh, look at the size of those uniforms. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay, can you pull yeah, down, down 24? Yeah. Yep. Which is, so how do you know, how do you tell it what one to pull down? Um, you can manually pull it down. If it's already been unloaded, you hit the unload button, and it'll bring out oh, okay. a listing on here. So I can come to the unload schedule and see what's left. I what's see. Coming and stuff. It's yeah. already out here. I just started it up. Oh, it moves in and out much quicker than uh, our machine, which is actually pretty nice. Oh, one oh six three. It moves quick. Yeah, it, is. it really does. So pulling it to one is the load station? Yeah. Okay. One, two, machine number. Okay. Look at that. That's awesome. So it's an MD5000 and it still has the twin yep. Lazy Susan there. Yeah, it's a regular stock machine that they retrofit the front end. They just basically uh, make some modifications so they can come up under the pallet and pick it yeah, up. Yeah, sure. And then, yep. So does it have to, does the, M, the machine, does the machine still have to be ordered from the factory with nope. this? It nope. to be retrofitted yeah, in the field. Retrofitted. That's awesome. Sure. That's really cool. Put this on there, the pallet tool that you have. Yes. The uh, Bastion, any one of them. Okay, yeah. and this is this is forgive me, Fastums or FMS? This is a this is a Daifuku. Daifuku. Okay, FMS. thank you. Yeah. I've so, missed said that earlier. Yeah, That's good the, to know. The Japanese yes, I've heard of that. Yeah, okay, yeah. awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. You're good. Check it out. I got a. Oh, there's the moon again. I gotta think that that's either an emergency cushion or maybe this is standard cushion. Oh, it, does, it looks like it's an emergency because I don't think they've even installed in that racking. So if it over travels, it probably hits that air piston, which is pretty cool. Just beautiful. Oh, did they add, if they added lighting, uh, I think that's what we did. We've added some LED lights on top of our uh, ATC as well, just to illuminate inside, which really helps. Here's one of those machines you just don't see every day. VT1000EX. Look at the size of this thing. What's actually really cool about it is, um, the idea that you have a tool change capable blade, like that makes it really nice, especially, I gotta think on a part like this, you know, the amount of material removal you might be doing, uh, you're blowing through inserts. So to be able to rotate them out, um, I can't tell, I'm not, that's a Capto, yes. Yeah, C, I wonder what size Capto that is, but it's a big one. I mean, the size of my fist relative to it. And it's making a real cut. That's cool. We're now over in their Partners in Think building and they asked me to do my presentation again 
uh, today, which I'm happy to do. A thank you to everybody that came yesterday. It was actually a standing room only, uh, which is super flattering, but then some of the later presentations weren't so well attended, so I'm hoping that they can get a, a good job for the next one of these where they can count and I tell everybody out here what's going on in the uh, learning areas, because this place was buzzing. It's still pretty early here, and you can tell uh, there's a good energy. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of folks here. Book chucks how different they are than the royals that we use. You guys can get a kick out of this one. So when we were there, one of the prime turning inserts. Is anybody using? Oh, look at the size of that uh, driven tool. That's crazy. I'm I'm curious. When prime came out, it was a big hub of a lot of our camper. Are anybody using? I'm genuinely curious uh, in the comments below to see are there folks using prime and we just don't know about it, or is it kind of one of those things where it just hasn't taken off? Another Geno. Okay, let's go check out the. Uh, go say hi. Yeah. Susie and the Quality Chem team, how are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good, you enjoying the show? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Really good foot traffic. Is it? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it was really busy yesterday. And good. Afternoon, carried right through. So. What may, I mean, are you guys looking for leads or answering customer questions? Like, what makes it a good show? A little for, bit of both. We get to see a lot of people that are already have our fluids or something. Yeah. And then we get a lot of people that are curious about putting our fluids or something. Yeah. It's a win win either way. That's good. Awesome. We really appreciate it. They've been, they've been super generous and uh, supplied all the coolant for our training classes. So we really appreciate it, guys. We'll see you around, though. Yeah, thank you. Oh, so this is the Riga fix. Ah, uh, man. Question is, do we go with one of these for the Willem? And uh, I don't think we would get the uh, fancy automated system. I think we would get the hand pump version, but it gives you a the chance to do a really uh, small projection uh, system for for holding tools. You don't have the size of a collet nut, and it's a very gentle taper. And you literally use it and just press fit it in. Uh, I don't know if that's a taper or an adapter, um, but and I don't know if I can take this out right here. We'll see. If we can get them to do a demo later. Uh, it's a really slick system. One of the Genos, this is the 460, the smaller, I think they, I believe they have a 560 now as well. We've got, we've got Tony Gunn father, <laughs> fathering us while we're trying to make a very serious film right now. Are you really making a serious film? Oh, I don't care. How's it going? Hey, got Tony yeah. Gunn, good to yeah. see you. Good to see you, yeah. John. Yeah. And uh, we're doing something just I don't think we've ever done this. It's, <laughs> no, like, a, it's like a feedback loop here. <laughs> yeah. No, good. And uh, I heard great things about your symposium yesterday. Thank very you. well done. You I have appreciate. another one today? Yeah, I'm doing the same one at 10. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm just doing a, a quick little think partnership thing where you see so many what we would consider competitors coming together to yeah, right. work for the end user to have that ultimate success in 125 years, right? Yeah, 125 Akuma. years of Akuma. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely incredible. Okay, so here's a trivia question. Okay. Do you know what food Okuma started making in their, in their origins? What food they started making? Mm -hmm. No. The Japanese noodles. They're, I should have at least taken a guess, right? You know, isn't that crazy? That's a, amazing. I guess there's some, I got. I should know the story better too, but there's some... Um, this, it, had to, it had to do with a lathe and like the way they cut the noodles or something, and then that's what led to the machine tool company. Isn't that crazy? That, <laughs> my mind is now blown. I can go home for the day. You've already taught me everything I need. What are you filming with? So right now we're just using my uh, iPad. So it's Serious? Nice, yeah, so... That's crazy. Take a look on this side. That's nuts! I have a lapel mic strap underneath my shirt right now that connects here to this piece, and then we've connected a little wide view camera to it. That's nuts! So what I can do now is immediately take this video, put it, put it into my app called Splice, yeah. do a quick edit, and within five minutes we have a video online for people That's to see awesome. what like just happened hassle. right now. That's yeah. cool. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, what, do you have an agenda for today or just yeah. filming? Yeah, so today is every as many of these machines, and that's getting all of the machines together, do interviews on those, and awesome. then I think from one to three we head upstairs 
to do every as many partners as want to share their story of partnership with the film. That's going to be a long day. Awesome. And the folks can find that over on MTV? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, hey, good yeah, to, buddy. Good, good to see, to see you, man. Awesome. Take care. Yes, sir. You too. Oh, cool. So here we go. So let's see how it feels. The, the guns are actually really fun to use. It's kind of one of those buy once, cry once, and then you love it. Oh, looks like, there we go. Okay, yeah, pretty similar. Although that's a, that's a slightly smaller size, I think, than uh, the Royal system that we use. And then, yeah, works good. Cool. Oh, the expanding mandrel. That's really cool. So I wonder, oh yeah, sure, that actually is out with the same drawbar to hold on the idea parts. I like that. So how do you take off the chuck? Sure. You take off the whole chuck? Yeah. So okay. We can change the chuck like this in one minute. Okay. And this is our Centrotech system. So I've never seen somebody change a chuck wearing a suit jacket. That's right. Well, <laughs> I can do it. I go from one chuck that I've just oh, taken off to another chuck. And that's off. Yeah. No kidding. So if we take a chuck, mount it, turn it 15 degrees, we have one locking bolt that locks it on, and it's ready to go. Okay. No indicating the run out is there, it's ready to make the first part. Is there an RPM limit on that? Not at all, no, the same RPM limit that, that you chuck yeah. has. Okay. So we have a, a base plate that goes on the machine, the machine yep. adapter, that we get, that we mount that, it mounts to the spindle nose and to the draw tube, and then we um, we check the run out and we dial it You're in, done. then nuts on. You never have to touch it again. So we can go from uh, ID clamp to hoodie yeah, clamp yeah. to a three draw chuck, anyone's three draw chuck. We have the, adapter plate that goes on the machine, yeah. and we have an adapter plate that's a mate to that that goes on anyone's chuck. What are the little uh, pads, the little rubber? That's, that's the secret to our repeatability. Okay. That is the way this this goes, that, that taper fits exactly on the taper of the, the base adapter, Okay. and that's why we can repeat to uh, less than or equal to three microns. Oh, wow. We, we okay. That's on. incredible. And we use this on all our adaptations. I don't know if you see the same thing on, on, on there. Sure. So everything, so we, we can not only change the chuck quick, but we can go from OD clamping to ID clamping to base driver to three job chuck to two job chuck. Interesting. So all yeah, on sure. The same chuck. So is this is it the case? And is it pronounced Heinbuch? Heinbuch. Thank you. Is it the case that all of your chucks are this way, or is this just an optional version to have that quick change? Everything about Heinbuch is flexibility and, and quick change. So the main chuck. This is a regular. This is our, our college chuck. Yeah. Um, but they all have the option. Okay. To have flexibility. That quick change. Okay. Now we do have mantles that are just. Saturn. You don't need to, sure. And they just do nothing but ID clamp. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Alec. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Here is another one of those Maltus's B250s. That's actually pretty cool. They've got the probe on it. I could totally see why a probe can help uh, on a machine like this. Um, you don't often see them on traditional turret lays, but here I get it. And taking that part. Oh, that's pretty nice, actually. The finishes are great. Oh, but. ID relieved in there. I wonder if you can see, I think the tool changer is kind of hidden. One of the things that I, uh, I know is something to be aware of for folks looking at these machines is your distance between parts when you bring the B all the way down in. You can just see it exactly right here. I don't know if that goes any further back, um, but you don't have the ability to have a bunch of a long gauge length tool and do, say, axial drilling. Good morning. Good to see you, Wade. Good to see you. How are you, doing? you. Wade is the brains behind this whole operation, oh, and one of the reasons that we've had so much success with you guys. Yes. Enjoying the event? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm hoping by Thursday I'll actually get to sleep a little bit. So. <laughs> I know what it's like to put some. Well, yeah. not That's like this scale, great. but yeah, awesome. We got a good team here, so. What makes know. this event a success for Akuma? So two things. One, we've got a good team at Akuma. Yeah. So between our marketing and our engineering staff, you know, it's a lot of people that work together to put this on, yeah. but also our partner companies. Yeah. So when you look around this room, we are flanked. Every wall is stacked in with partner companies. 
they bring a lot of energy and a lot of technology to be able to, to see and show as well. So that, that brings a good crowd, a good draw, uh, some new excitement to see. Also showing some really cool technologies on the machine. Um, stuff that's been standard on the controls for you know the last 20 years, nobody knows, nobody talks about it. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's really cool to see people walk up and go, oh, I didn't know you could do that, you know, torque skip. How are you using torque skip, right? Say that again? Torque? Torque, torque skip. Torque skip? I call it, and I'm going to show my southern knees here, poor man's pro. So oh. we can we can monitor the torque on the axis. So we used to use it, and we use it especially with robot loading and things yeah. like that, um, to check for misloading. Sure. So instead of using a probe and spending ten, twenty thousand dollars on probe setups and things like that, we can come in with a tool or a, a blank spot on the turret yes. or a sub spindle, and you set up a parameter window so you can come in and touch off on the part, and you say within this range. I shouldn't see any load. Yes. Well, if it's misloaded and something's sticking out where it shouldn't be, or they put the wrong part in, yes. and the material is there or it's not there, sure. you're either sensing load or you're not sensing load when you should be. All that's standard on the control on these lathes. Only on the lathes? Yeah, on okay. lathes. It's an optional on mills, Option. but it's standard on all the lathes. I was going to ask, like, could I take, a, if I wanted to do this with a drill or a tool, and actually come in to check if a hole was there, and if it wasn't there, before I damage the tool or the part, have it alarm out. Good, it's yeah. sensitive enough to potentially do that. Yeah. That's awesome. Now on mills, we typically go with uh, tool monitoring, adaptive control, like yeah. Karen T-Mac, things like that. It's a little more advanced. Sure. Uh, but on lathes. But that's not poor man's program. Yeah, that's right, yeah, that, that's true, that's not poor man's program. Okay, but if I'm a machinist at a company and I'm trying to convince my boss to let me come to this next year, what's yeah. the reason to convince him? Because you get to learn things that you don't know. Yeah. So anytime you are in a shop, you only know what you're exposed to. Yeah. You come to an event like this, you get to see things that is being demonstrated on the machines. More importantly, you can network and you can talk to yeah. other machinists and other people that are here. And if you look around this room, yesterday we had 650 different people here. They all have different knowledge and different experiences. Yeah. And you start talking to those people and pick their brains. Yeah. You learn things that you didn't expect to, to learn. Yeah. I learned things from your presentation yeah. yesterday awesome. that I didn't know. Good, so. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And folks, if you come to this, bring a part. Um, it, it's so, I yeah. think it's so great to hand somebody a part, even if it's a 3D printed miniature version, if your part's too big to travel with, right. and, and ask those questions. Like, you don't know what you don't know. Right. That's what's exciting. Yep. Well, hey, I'll let you go, but hey. good to see you, Wade. Good Thank to see you. you. Take care. It. Yep. Okay, we're back here in no man's land, but I actually think this is really cool. Um, you know, obviously they're trying to, to show off, you know, what they can do, but really, like they have these parts broken down to teach, hey, here's how you rebuild a B axis on an N, uh, MA500. So a little bit, um, I think, like our horizontal is the MB4000. They have an MA version, which is like, it's insane. It's like twice the weight. It's the beefy version, which is kind of funny to think about because ours isn't exactly light. Um, but it's funny to like, Think about how they have to have those skill sets, that tribal knowledge. I've been continuing to think a lot about that, about how we train and inspire the next generation of folks to be machinists. Uh, but it's so much more than just machinists. It's the folks that we need to teach the machinists. And by the way, if you're watching this video and you teach at a high school, at a Votech school, at an engineering school, personally, thank you. Uh, that's what I'm scared about. Um, I think we can maybe tackle getting folks and kids interested in being machinists. I don't know how we're going to recruit the next generation of teachers, and that matters so much. Because um, you need to teach people to be machinists, and you need to teach people how to rebuild these machines. So, um, yeah. See, maybe later today we can get some footage of this thing. I don't really know. Oh, I guess it's just their five axis that can also do turning. It's pretty cool. A couple of things that stood out to here, we just started using the Santa 327 series for a couple of different operations where we've been able to replace woodruff cutters. It's a cheaper insert, it gives us the ability to have um, some back relief on that back cutting edge that we didn't often have on the woodruff cutters. Um, and it's, it's actually just a pretty cool tool. Um, you can also adjust the stick out a little bit easier sometimes than you can uh, on the traditional woodruff tool. Um, the three, I think these are called the 316, but the modular insert head style tools. What's really cool about these is you can also put these on the uh, either carbide shafts or the active dampening shafts. Now these are not inexpensive, but if you need it for that stability, it's really cool. And the other one was, oh, check this out. Um, look at this Keyway broaching tool. 